Oh, hi there. I'm Mr. Panola, and I just had some energy while I was moving across your screen. Do you know what kind of energy I had? If you said kinetic energy, you'd be right. Kinetic energy is one of the many forms of energy that exist in our world. But did you know that there are many other forms of energy besides kinetic energy? I know what you're thinking. Well, based on the last video, we know that there, are some, there is something called gravitational potential. But the list goes on from there, and that's going to be the purpose of our video today. We are going to examine what are the types of energy that exist in our world. Kinetic is one of them. Gravitational potential is another. But we're going to add to that list. In fact, we will talk today about kinetic, gravitational potential, elastic potential, something that I previewed briefly in the last video, and then we'll move on to types of energy we haven't discussed yet, such as thermal, chemical, electrical, electromagnetic, otherwise known as EM, and nuclear. Our goal today is to come up with a couple of visual, real-life examples of each of these types of energy so that we could evaluate how energy flows in the couple classes that follow. Hello again. I was just walking this time. I had kinetic energy once again, but notice that I was walking a little slower than I was jogging before. That means that I had less kinetic energy than I had before. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. And whether I'm walking, running, or jogging, I have kinetic energy in all, all of those examples. But can other things have kinetic energy? Certainly. Anything that's moving has kinetic energy. Let's consider this model car, for example. This model car operates by pulling it back and letting go. And you'll notice that when I let go, the car moves across the table. Let's watch it again. Three, two, one. The car was moving, so it had kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is simply the energy of motion. You'll also notice that its wheels spin. Even just the spinning of the wheels would be considered kinetic energy because the wheels are in motion. Oh, hi there. This time I have a different type of energy. Now I'm standing still with my hands on my knees, so I don't have kinetic energy right now. However, I have another type of energy. Do you know which? Well, it's a type of potential energy because my energy is stored up. If I was to fall off this table, I would certainly have a lot of energy as I'd be moving towards the ground. But right now, that energy is just stored up based on my position above the ground. This type of energy is called gravitational potential energy. And anything that is above the ground, a height above the ground, has gravitational potential energy based on its mass, its height, and the gravity on the planet that you're at. So I have gravitational potential energy now because I'm above the ground. But can other things? Let's take a look. Maybe some of you have noticed this in my classroom if you've been here in person. I have a tennis ball hanging from the ceiling of my classroom. Students every year ask me why. Why, Mr. Canola, do you have a tennis ball just hanging there? It's to demonstrate gravitational potential energy. If I was to come by with a pair of scissors and to cut the string, the tennis ball would fall down to the ground. That's because it has energy that is stored up based on its position above the ground. 
Just like me, when I was standing on the table, the tennis ball has gravitational potential energy compared to the ground. It's waiting to transform that stored energy into another type of energy. I hope you didn't flinch at that. I stored energy in another way in that last example, in this rubber band. This rubber band had energy stored up in it, not because it was above the ground, but because I pulled it back. When I pull the rubber band back, I'm storing energy in the elastic of the band. And once I let go, the band will want to go back to its original position and it will launch forward. This is another form of stored or potential energy called elastic potential energy. Things that have energy stored up based on stretching or compressing have energy stored up because of elastic potential energy. So this rubber band has elastic potential energy stored up in it, and I can let that energy transform into kinetic energy when the band goes flying. But can other things have elastic potential energy? Certainly. Remember, anything I stretch or compress from its normal position would have elastic potential energy. If you have a wind-up car, you're compressing the wind-up spring and you're storing energy for later use. Here is another toy that has elastic potential energy. This toy is made up of a spring. I'm going to compress the spring and then let go. The toy will have energy stored up in the spring and watch what happens when that stored energy gets released. The toy will transform that energy into another form of energy. The energy got transformed from elastic potential energy stored up in the spring into kinetic energy as it flew into the air and eventually into gravitational potential energy as it went higher and higher. But what about this match? Does this have energy? It does. That match had energy because it had another form of energy, thermal energy, a word that is usually associated with high temperatures or heat. Anytime something is really hot, it has thermal energy, and that energy can be used for a variety of purposes as well. Another good example of thermal energy is if you take your hands and you rub your hands together like this. When you stop rubbing, your hands will feel a little bit warmer. Try it. You're taking kinetic energy and you're converting that kinetic energy into thermal energy as your hands feel warmer. Even though your hands aren't on fire like the match was, you still had thermal energy due to the high temperature. In fact, anything that is not at a temperature of absolute zero has thermal energy because the little molecules inside are moving around. When I was running before or climbing onto the table before, I must have gotten my energy from somewhere. People don't just have energy. Where did the energy come from? Well, it comes from another form, and that is chemical energy. Did you know that I got my energy from eating food? For example, after making this video, I'm going to have a snack. I'm going to eat this package of crackers. When my body digests the crackers, there will be chemical reactions happening that will give me more energy. In fact, if I didn't eat for two days, I probably wouldn't have any energy to do anything. If I didn't eat for a month, I'd be in real trouble. I would have no energy even to get up out of bed. Humans get their energy from the chemical reactions inside their body from the food that they eat. And that's why you want to eat healthy food that will have healthy chemical reactions to give you enough energy to last throughout your day. But food isn't the only thing that can give you chemical energy. In fact, there's chemical energy in this battery. Did you ever wonder what's inside a battery? Well, there's battery acid. And there's a chemical reaction occurring 
that is allowing the battery to power electrical devices. This battery here, if you look closely, has corroded. Some of the battery acid has leaked out a little bit. And so now this battery isn't really useful because it doesn't have that same kind of acid and chemical reactions inside that are going to power our devices. Chemical energy is another form of energy that we also see all around us. How about yet another form of energy? This clock in front of me doesn't operate on batteries. Instead, it gets its power from this cord and this plug. If I take the plug and I plug it into an outlet, the clock now will turn on. The clock needs energy to operate. But what kind of energy is it using? It's not chemical energy because it's not being powered by batteries. Instead, this is electrical energy that's coming from the movement of electrons through the core. And I get that from the outlet. And so now there's electrical energy that is operating this clock in front of me. Electrical energy comes anytime that you plug something in. The electrons move through the wires, and therefore whatever you're using has electrical energy supply. But what about when I use my cell phone to make a call, just like I did just there? My cell phone needs to use energy to send out a signal. What kind of energy, though? You might remember that the cell phone is actually using microwaves, just like your microwave oven might cook your food. Microwaves are on the electromagnetic spectrum, and so they constitute another form of energy, electromagnetic energy. Do you remember the EM spectrum? Radio waves, microwaves, infrared rays, visible light, ultraviolet light, X-rays, gamma rays. We talked about all those different types. Even the lights around me in the room are giving off visible light. Any energy given off as waves in one of those forms is considered electromagnetic energy. So plants, which grow by getting their energy from the sun, those plants are growing because they are getting electromagnetic energy from the sun that allows them to undergo photosynthesis. The last form of energy I can't really draw, but maybe you've seen smokestacks that look like this, very large and imposing ones at power plants. These smokestacks, in certain cases, are generating nuclear energy. They are nuclear reactors. Nuclear energy comes from when you take the nucleus of an atom, which is held very closely together by, you guessed it, the strong and the weak nuclear forces. If I release the energy in those bonds, I will release tons and tons of energy. And so the energy stored in those bonds can be released through nuclear energy. Nuclear energy really comes from the nucleus of atoms, and it can be produced in nuclear power plants such as ones that have these big reactors that you sometimes see smoke bellowing out of the top. Not every power plant is a nuclear power plant. There are a lot of safety precautions that need to be taken. But if you can harness the energy of the nucleus of an atom by breaking it apart, or perhaps by combining two nuclei, you can get a lot of energy in the form of nuclear energy, the last type that we'll discuss today.